to this Mass of the seventh Sunday of Easter, which is being offered for the repose of the soul of Steve Franks. You're very welcome here to Mass at English Martyrs in Chard. Just to remind you that these Masses are um, produced in accordance with the government regulations on social distancing. So, Anyone who has helped to contribute in any way uh, has done so in a very safe way. And so, my brothers and sisters, as we begin this Mass, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned. In my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Graciously hear our supplications, O Lord, so that we who believe that the Saviour of the human race is with you in your glory may experience, as he promised, until the end of the world, his abiding presence among us, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After Jesus was taken up into heaven, the Apostles went back from the Mount of Olives as it is called, to Jerusalem, a short distance away, no more than a Sabbath walk. And when they reached the city, they went to the upper room where they were staying. There were Peter and John, James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James son of Alphaeus and Simon the Zealot, and Jude son of James. All of these joined in continuous prayer, together with several women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with her brothers. The Word of the Lord.
I am sure I shall see the Lord goodness in the land of the living. The Lord is my light and my help. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Before whom shall I shrink? I am sure I shall see the Lord goodness in the land of the living. There is one thing I ask of the Lord, for this I long, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to savour the sweetness of the Lord, to behold his temple. I am sure I shall see the Lord's goodness in the land of the living. O oh Lord, hear my voice when I call, have mercy and answer. Of you my heart has spoken, seek his face. I am sure I shall see the Lord's goodness in the land of the living. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. If you can have some share in the sufferings of Christ, be glad, because you will enjoy a much greater gladness when his glory is revealed. It is a blessing for you when they insult you for bearing the name of Christ, because it means that you have the spirit of glory, the spirit of God resting on you. None of you should ever deserve to suffer for being a murderer, a thief, a criminal or an informer. But if any one of you should suffer for being a Christian, then he is not to be ashamed of it. He should thank God that he has been called one. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I will not leave you orphans, says the Lord. I will come back to you, and your hearts will be full of joy. Hallelujah, hallelujah, The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus raised his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that your Son may glorify you. And through the power over all mankind that you have given him, let him give eternal life to all those you have entrusted to him. And eternal life is this, to know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I have glorified you on earth and finished the work that you gave me to do. Now, Father, it is time for you to glorify me. With that glory I had with you before ever the world was, I have made your name known to the men you took from the world to give me. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now at last they know that all you have given me comes indeed from you, for I have given them the teaching you gave to me, and they have truly accepted this, that I came from you, and have believed that it was you who sent me. I pray for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those you have given me, because they belong to you. All I have is yours, and all you have is mine, and in them I am glorified. I am not in the world any longer, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
So today we hear this discourse that Jesus gives on the night of the Last Supper before his death. And the seeds of all Christian spirituality can be found in it. Jesus emphasizes his relationship with the Father, so we are reminded of the loving relationship that exists within the Trinity. Now, people used to have, or they used to use a shamrock plant as a way of describing the Trinity because of the three leaves on one plant. But perhaps water is a better way to um, describe the Trinity because it comes in three forms. You have liquid as water, you have solid as ice, and you have vapour as steam. But they're all still the same basic molecules of water. So in a way that's probably a better analogy to help us understand the, the Trinity. And God wants to draw us, he wants to draw the whole world into that unity of the Trinity because God is a gathering force. He wants us to be one just as he is one. God's purpose is to bring the whole world into this unity. Ultimately, anything opposed to God is sin, and so sin is something that is always divisive. It pulls things apart. God wants us to live, to truly live. The devil, of course, wants the opposite. And it's no coincidence that the word live in reverse is evil. Jesus, the Son, draws all people together in this unity. It's a bit like a magnetic field, and we're all drawn towards that person of Jesus, because ultimately, that is the very purpose of our lives. He is our destiny. But, unfortunately, it often takes us our whole lives to discover this. Obviously, at the moment, we hear how infectious this virus is. But we have to remember that truth and goodness are also just as infectious. They can't be contained. Thomas Aquinas was once asked, what does God do all day? And the answer he gave was, God enjoys himself. In other words, he rests in his truth and in his goodness. If you are in a good mood, you want to share it with others. You want to share your delight with others. So God's delight spills over into creation. He wants to share his love and his joy with us all. This is the very essence of spiritual life. Jesus says, I have come that you may have life and have it to the full. And this is what it means to be a Christian, to have that deep peace and joy in our hearts. We see in the readings that there is a kind of paradox today. On the one hand, God wants to save the world because he loves it. What he created in Genesis, we hear, was indeed very good. But then we hear the world referred to as something negative. Jesus says, my kingdom is not of this world. As we know, the devil is the prince of this world. So the world seems to be good and bad at the same time. So we must not be surprised that we who follow Jesus may be hated by the world. It is said that the measure in which you follow Christ is the same measure by which you will be hated by the world. Unless you are hated by the world, you cannot follow Jesus. Following Jesus, you see, leads to the cross because that is where he is going. So we have this concept of true love and true 
suffering. We heard about suffering in the second reading from St. Peter. So true love and true suffering are actually two sides of the same coin in this world. We only need to look at the cross in order to understand this. Nobody actually wants to suffer, but we know that it has such a deeper meaning than we can ever really understand. Ultimately, the whole point of the church is to transform the very world we live in by bringing it all back to Christ. But we can't transform the world in relation to its own truths. Only the truth that is the person of Jesus. As Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. So what is truth in this world of relative, relativism? In our postmodern climate, anyone's truth carries equal measure. I can be or do whatever I want to. The world does not seem to embrace the one objective and definitive truth that is God himself. So when we spread the message of God's truth into the world, this helps them to draw all people back to God. And this is ultimately the way to achieve peace and joy in our hearts, which is what Jesus so earnestly desires for us. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the power of the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As so many of us face into an unknown world, let us raise our minds and hearts in prayer to God the ever-generous giver of love and life. May our consciences be sharpened to sense the direction of the living God. May he protect us from all that draws us away from him. May he guide our leaders in the way of truth and in values which are built on him. Lord, hear us. We pray that the message of Christ be brought to all nations, so that a spirit of truth, goodness and love can guide all its peoples to peace, integrity and care of the weak, the sick, the hungry and the homeless. Lord, in your mercy. In, in his message for today, the 54th World Communications Day, Pope Francis highlights that we are living in an age when falsification of the truth 
is increasingly sophisticated and is reaching unprecedented levels of fake news. With him we pray for the courage and discernment to reject false and evil stories and in our lives commit to the pursuit of truth. Lord, hear us. We pray for all those who have committed their lives, both at home and abroad, to communicating the word of God. Lord, hear us. We pray for the responsible use of the internet and social media, so that our digital communications may be a tool to spread truth and happiness, love and respect, inclusion and encounter, rather than falsehood, exclusion, unhappiness and alienation. Lord, hear us. In this unprecedented month of May, we turn to our Mother Mary and ask that she comfort those who are in mourning for loved ones, be close to those who are sick, and bless the work of those who care for them. Lord, hear us. Let us now pray to our Blessed Mother Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. We bow our heads and remember in silence our own personal intentions and the intentions of those who have asked for our prayers. Heavenly Father, may your love and compassion and truth be constantly with us and help to guide us throughout our lives. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings, so that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty in our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For the Lord Jesus, the King of glory, conqueror of sin and death, ascended to the highest heavens, as the angels gazed in wonder. Mediator between God and man, Judge of the world and Lord of hosts, he ascended not to distance himself from our lowly state, but 
that we, his members, might be confident of following where he, our head and founder, has gone before. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. I'm using Eucharistic prayer number three. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your Church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, Declan, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. 
Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. And so now, wherever you are, let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Father, I pray that they may be one, as we also are one. Alleluia. My Jesus, I believe you are present in this holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I passionately desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my soul, so that I may unite myself wholly to you, now and forever. Amen.
Hear us, O God, our Saviour, and grant us confidence that through these sacred mysteries there will be accomplished in the body of the whole Church what has already come to pass in Christ her Head, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. So thank you very much for joining us in this Mass today. And as you know, next Sunday is Pentecost Sunday, so do please keep the drawings coming in. They're greatly appreciated. And just to remind you also that on Wednesday we have our Eucharistic Adoration out in the car park, so do please come along to that, and there is opportunity for confession there too. I wish you all a very blessed Sunday. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go forth in peace. Thanks be to God. Lord Jesus